In this lesson, we're going to cover the last of the NIST defined cloud models, which is SAAS Software as a Service. This is going to be a pretty quick lesson because SAAS is simple. And also, even if you don't know it already, you're almost certainly a software as a service customer yourself already. So you already know how it works. As usual, we'll start with the NIST definition. The capability provided to the consumer is to use the provider's applications running on a cloud infrastructure. The applications are accessible from various client devices through either a thin client interface, such as a web browser, for example, web-based email, or a program interface. The consumer does not manage or control the underlying cloud infrastructure, including network, servers, operating systems, storage, or even individual application capabilities, with the possible exception of limited user-specific application configuration settings. So looking at our data center stack, this is the opposite of the on-premises solution. With software as a service, it's the provider that manages everything, the entire stack all the way from the physical facility up to the data. You as the customer will get in at the application level. So you'll be able to work with the application, you'll be able to create data as well, but it's the provider that manages everything. Some examples of software as a service are Microsoft Office 365, Salesforce.com, Intuit who make financial applications, Adobe Creative Cloud, and Gmail. Yeah, our normal cloud-based email services like Hotmail and Gmail, they were actually available before the term cloud was even coined. So we don't normally think of them as cloud-based software as a service, but that's actually exactly what they are. The provider is providing an application to you, the customer, and they're providing and managing the entire data center stack. So basically any kind of cloud software that you use is software as a service. For the billing with SAS, it will typically have a monthly fee per user. And there may be multiple pricing tiers offered based on the usage as well. Let's have a look at an example of some SAS billing structure. We'll have a look at Microsoft Office 365. So I'm going to scroll down a little and you can see I'm here on the pricing page for Office 365 for business. The prices are per customer per month or per user per month. And there's three different tiers here. Different tiers, you get different applications available as part of each tier. Starting off over on the right, Office 365 Business Essentials, that includes email, it includes Microsoft OneDrive Storage, Skype for Business, and Microsoft Teams. On the left, Office 365 Business, that package includes all of the normal Office applications like Microsoft Word, Excel, Access, etc. Office 365 Business and Business Essentials are kind of the opposite of each other. So Office 365 Business includes all the normal apps, but it doesn't include email, Skype for Business, or Teams, which is on Business Essentials. Both of them do have the OneDrive storage though. Really combining the two is what you get with Office 365 Business Premium, that includes all of the different packages. So Business Essentials is $7 per user per month, Business is $13.20, and Office 365 Business Premium is $17.50 per month. So this is pretty kind of standard pricing that you would see with software as a service. Often the provider will give you different tiers and at the higher prices, you're gonna be able to do more with that application. Quite often, the least expensive one will actually be a free package as well. And it's usually based on per user and it's gonna be billed per month. Thanks very much for watching. If you found this video useful, then you can click the link above my head now to get access to my complete introduction to Cloud Course. That's all for free. And also please subscribe so that you can get my latest tutorials.